Hello, and welcome to today's webinar, Time on Alchemy Languages Running Out, Have You Switched to the New IBM Watson Services? Before I hand it off to our speakers, I want to cover a few housekeeping items that will help you get the most out of today's session. At the bottom of your audience console are multiple widgets you can use during the webcast. If you have any questions, you can click on the Q&A widget and submit your question at any time. Additional links are available in the resource widget that looks like a green file. If you have any technical sound or video trouble, please click on the Help widget. It has a question mark icon and covers common technical issues for webcasts. Restarting your browser resolves most technical issues. All registrants of today's webcast will receive a follow-up email within the next 24 hours containing links to the on-demand recording. At this time, I'd like to introduce today's speakers. We have Deepika and Pavan from Watson Offering Management. Now I'd like to hand it over to Deepika. Thank you, Nancy. We have a packed session today. Um, a number of topics uh, related to switching from Alchemy Language and Alchemy Data News to the newer Watson services. I'll start off with an overview of our new offering portfolio, talk a little bit about what's changed, uh, walk you through a timeline of when things switch over and what your absolute deadline is for switching over, and get, get you started off with where to start. After that, uh, my partner for this session, uh, Pavan, is going to go through a deep dive on the differences between the Alchemy services and the new Watson services, and then offer up a blueprint for migration. He'll also touch on our 2018 themes uh, for the new Watson services and um, speak to some of the use cases that we're seeing more um, that are more popular with the portfolio. Finally, I will conclude with more information for you on where to get help and some of the resources that we have available. So let's first start talking about the offering portfolio. <clears throat> if you're here, then you're probably a user of Alchemy API. And um, if you go back in time, Alchemy API has multiple APIs underneath it, Alchemy Vision, Alchemy Data News, and Alchemy Language. We announced the deprecation of Alchemy API back in March of this year. And uh, the three key Watson services that um, are the newer uh, migration options for Alchemy users are natural language understanding, discovery, and visual recognition. And we'll go through each one of these in a little bit more detail. Um, but natural language understanding, I want to mention, is a relatively new service. It was, it was launched in February of 2017 and is um, a, a substitute or um, uh, is your replacement for Alchemy language. Watson Discovery was launched back in December 2016. It includes the capabilities of Alchemy Data News, and it also has additional capabilities that we'll talk about to analyze data that you can bring in as well. Um, and visual recognition has the best of um, our image uh, recognition and image um, services. And that was launched back in June of 2016. <clears throat> now going into our discovery offering portfolio, I just want to give you um, an overview of the newest offerings that we have today and how they all come together. The discovery portfolio covers offerings that primarily work with unstructured text or unstructured data. And uh, the intent with the portfolio is that we, we're, we're trying to create or we have capabilities that apply AI to identify insights, find patterns, and be able to report on trends that are hard to find with an unstructured data. Uh, the first offering that I'll speak to over here is the Watson National Language Understanding Service. This is our advanced text analytics service that is able to extract um, 
metadata such as concepts and sentiment and emotion and so on from unstructured data. It provides the advanced natural language processing capabilities that is actually used within also the Watson Discovery Service, which is a separate service. Watson Discovery in itself is an insight engine that can either point to news data or it can point to any data that you bring into the service. All of the data is ingested and indexed on the cloud. Then you can apply advanced AI queries onto the data to be able to extract insights. Now both Watson National Language Understanding and Watson Discovery can, be, can make um, use of models developed with Watson Knowledge Studio. Watson Knowledge Studio is a special um, offering that allows for domain customization. So within different industries, within domains, um, if there are specific terms that need to be identified um, in unstructured text, then you can create custom annotation models with Watson Knowledge Studio. And those models can be deployed in multiple endpoints. So you essentially build once within Watson Knowledge Studio you can deploy the model either within Watson NLU or Watson Discovery or even use it on on-premise solutions such as Watson Explorer. Now the key thing over here is that Watson Knowledge Studio is, uh, a, while it's a separate offering, uh, you're one of the first uh, people to find out that Watson Knowledge Studio has actually gone GA on IBM Cloud today, December 18th. Um, it's a big announcement for us. So all of these services, Watson All Studio, NLU, and Discovery, are all on IBM Cloud. Now you may be thinking, okay, why, why do I have to switch from my Alchemy services, apart from the fact that Alchemy services have been deprecated and we have an end date as to how long the services will be supported. Um, some of the reasons to switch is the newer Watson services, Discovery and NLU, are really where Watson investment is being funneled. Um, Watson NLU um, has the same advanced core NLP capabilities that exist in Alchemy language and some more. And Pavan will go into some of the details um, over there. Um, in addition, with Watson Knowledge Studio models, We've made it very easy to create your models within WKS and deploy it easily within any of the endpoints. We'll also talk a little bit about the uh, pricing plan. Uh, you'll find that you have a lot more options with the newer Watson services, and uh, pricing is actually a lot more, um, a, a lot less expensive when you do an apples to apples comparison between Alchemy and the new Watson services. So if you haven't switched now, um, that's a great reason to make the switch quickly. Now let's talk a little bit about natural language understanding. Um, I mentioned earlier that this is our um, flagship product for uh, advanced text analytics. And some of the key differentiators with NLU include the, you know, the wide variety of enrichment features that we have look at competitive offerings, they don't offer such um, a diverse set of um, enrichment features. The other um, uh, key benefit is that you're able to also do sentiment and emotion analysis on the same data in addition to metadata extraction. Um, and not just um, sentiment of, of, of a document or a sentiment of uh, um, a block of text, but you could also do targeted sentiment and emotion. Um, and finally, NLU is available in a number of different languages. So it, apart from being able to detect languages, um, we have language support as well, um, uh, which, which uh, span multiple languages. And uh, you're able to use custom domain models from Watson Knowledge Studio. And both of these topics, Pavan will be touching in a little bit more detail from a migration perspective. Now, if you were using Alchemy Data News, then um, your go-to product 
from a migration perspective is Discovery News. Discovery News is um, um, <clears throat> part of Watson Discovery Service. And what it points to is it has a news collection which has been enriched with um, NLP. Um, so you're able to identify uh, important metadata within news and query on that metadata. Uh, you're able to also apply complex aggregate queries on the data to surface patterns and uh, uh, identify trends uh, historically over um, millions of articles. Now, um, all of this is available within the Watson Discovery Service, and the news collection is actually available as part of the free plan, so you're able to test it out. Um, and the migration process for switching from Alchemy Data News to Discovery News is actually very simple and straightforward. And so I'll walk through in a little bit the, um, the, the charging, the pricing around Discovery News. It's also very simplified compared to uh, what we had previously with Alchemy Data News. Now, if you're looking for a solution, and we found that many of our Alchemy Language customers have actually adopted this path, where um, you want to go a little bit beyond just doing NLP on streaming on structured text, but you, you, you want to be able to have a place where you can index it and query it, rather than set up your own system to build out that pipeline. And that's where discovery uh, comes in. We've found a lot of our Alchemy language customers switching to Watson Discovery instead of Watson NLU because discovery offers really the end-to-end -end, um, inside engine capability uh, where you're able to ingest any data you want. Um, you're able to um, pass it through the enrichment pipeline. You're able to then um, index it and query it in addition, we've introduced a lot of new capabilities within Discovery where you're able to get what we refer to as out-of-box AI, whether it's um, being able to retrieve passages from the documents that you've ingested, or um, being able to visualize relationship graphs, or identify anomalies in your data. Um, so a dis a Discovery is definitely another option for you in terms of um, what product you may want to migrate to. Now let's talk about dates that matter. Um, we announced the availability, the general availability of Watson Discovery back um, in, uh, in December of last year, 2016. Um, and we announced the availability of Watson NLU in February of uh, 2017. Um, uh, subsequently, on March 7th, we announced the deprecation of Alchemy API. And we <clears throat> stopped marketing Alchemy API beginning April 7th. Now, um, we, w we are keeping Alchemy API available, and it is being supported for one year after the deprecation announcement. So that means your Alchemy API instances will still be available to March 7th, 2018. But at that time, all instances will be, de de uh, will be deleted and all um, access with the same uh, instances uh, will go away. So you do have only a, a couple of months to switch to um, the newer Watson services. Um, so if you haven't begun your migration journey, uh, it's time to do so now. Now let's talk a little bit about where to start now uh, that you understand what the new services are. I think the first first uh, item on your checklist really should be which new Watson services will you be switching to? Um, is it Watson NLU? Is it Watson Discovery? Do you also need um, a Watson Knowledge Studio subscription? Um, and then you need to get on the IBM Cloud Platform. Um, if you're already um, a cloud platform member, and you, you already have a cloud, um, an IBM Cloud account, um, then you can just add to your existing subscription and um, uh, make, make use of these services. Um, if not, you'll have to create a new um, IBM Cloud subscription, and we can help you 
uh, navigate those waters. And once once you have your subscription set up and you have your uh, uh, new Watson services instantiated, then you'll have to go in, um, uh, build out, uh, you, you'll have to update your application to reflect the, uh, the, the new services and the new API calls that you're calling the new Watson um, offerings. So um, this chart really speaks to a summary of what's really changed between Alchemy and the newer products that we have today. So let's start in the bottom left with new platform. Um, Alchemy uh, was available as a hosted solution on a third-party platform. Now the Watson services are all on IBM Cloud, and IBM Cloud was previously called Bluemix. Um, if you were an Alchemy customer, then you would be using um, authentication with, um, um, with with an API key for Alchemy. Now that has changed. Now you'll be using a username password combination for authentication. And finally, um, billing, metering, and how you visualize your usage, everything is consolidated as part of the IBM Cloud dashboard. Um, so you don't have a different way, um, uh, another service to track which is different, different from um, other IBM services. Everything is part of the IBM Cloud um, service dashboard. Now going on to the next block, which talks about API signature and Pavan will um, go into a lot more detail over here in terms of how we've consolidated and streamlined our API. I'm not going to spend much time on it. Uh, moving up, talking about pricing and plans. Um, I'll, I'll spend a little bit of time on the next chart um, just, uh, speaking to how the, what the plans look like with uh, the newer Watson services, um, why they're less expensive, and how you can really tap into custom models without um, um, a, a very large expense. Um, Language support, Pavan will speak to the new uh, languages that are supported as well as the expanded support that we have. And he will also uh, speak to uh, deployment options. We have a new deployment option with NLU and with Watson Discovery, um, which is the premium deployment that allows for more isolation, um, more security, as well as higher throughput in the case of NLU. Let's talk about uh, pricing and plans. Um, and I'm going to actually break this out into two separate sections. In the top, you see the Watson NLU pricing plan. In the bottom, you see Watson Discovery price, pricing plan, which is relevant for news queries. So first of all, I want to point out that both these services have a new light plan. Um, the new light plans are free forever plans where you sign up uh, for an account and you essentially have access to that account uh, for free as long as you um, have usage on, on that instance. Um, and that's something that we've recently introduced with an IBM. Within the light plan, you have 30,000 NLU items um, as well as access to one custom model. Um, and when you talk about what is an NLU item, the NLU items refer to, it's, it's a charge metric that combines the amount of data that you use for an enrichment feature and the number of enrichment features you use. Um, and we look at data units in chunks of 10,000 characters. Um, so for instance, if you're doing emotion and sentiment analysis for um, on, on a, um, a data unit size of 20,000 characters, that's two data units times two enrichment features, which is four NLU items. Um, <clears throat> that's just a quick way, a uh, quick um, view into the math behind uh, NLU items. But you have um, a very generous amount of NLU items within the light plan, um, and then we have a tiered pricing structure within the standard plan, and this is similar to what you would have seen with Alchemy Language, except that the pricing for tier one is um, lower than what you would see for Alchemy language. In addition, um, you have access to the free custom model in the light plan, and the price of custom models in the standard plans have been lowered um, 
to $800 per custom module per month, um, which is uh, uh, more, more than 70% um, lo uh, lower than what we used to have. Um, and I mentioned we also have premium plans, and these go up to about 200 million NLU items, and uh, those are priced um, based on uh, uh, different tiers as well. Now, <clears throat> um, Alchemy Language uh, used to have an advanced plan, um, which allowed you to use custom models. We've got rid of the advanced plan. We just have the standard plan with NLU. Um, and you can add any number of custom models to the standard plan. Um, now, with Alchemy Data News, there was a more complex um, pricing metric, which, which took into consideration the number of news queries, the amount of data you got uh, returned, and the, the types of um, uh, enrichments you would apply, and so on. Uh, we've really simplified. Um, uh, the news pricing with Watson Discovery, um, where we just charge uh, by the queries. You have 1,000 news queries that are free within the life plan, and um, you also have access to um, uh, uh, additional queries, irrespective of whether it's within the standard, advanced, or premium plan um, on Watson Discovery. Um, it is charged a flat 10 cents per query. Uh, there's definitely more details available on pricing, but this is just a quick overview of um, what you would see with NLU and discovery pricing. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Pavan to talk about the deep dive within the API platform and language support. Thanks, Deepika. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm going to talk about some technical details uh, which will be useful for you while switching from Alchemy to NLU. We'll talk about API changes, uh, what are some platform and deployment changes you can expect, as well as the languages that are supported in NLU. There are some the differences from Alchemy with respect to languages and uh, upcoming plans for languages uh, in the year 2018. So the main change around API is that there's a single endpoint for all the features. In Alchemy, we, we used to have a separate endpoint for all the features, and, and we had a convenient uh, endpoint called combined call where you can combine all the features into a single endpoint. Um, so that is the main change. There is just an analyze endpoint, which you can use to pass in more than one feature request. And I'll actually show uh, an example request in the upcoming slides. The response structure is new, which means that your existing code that passes Alchemy response will not work for an NLU response. We have made the response simplified, and also it is more consistent with other Watson services. <clears throat> JSON is the only output format that is supported in NLU. Alchemy used to support XML. We do not, NLU does not support XML. So here's an example of Alchemy versus NLU request. As you can see, <clears throat> the, the key values in the post request have been moved to a JSON um, structure within the NLU request, where you can actually pass in the feature request individually. The, the authentication me mechanism has changed. We no longer use an API key. There's a user and password credentials you will you will have access to in the IBM Cloud once you provision an NLU instance. And then um, you'll just have to pass those credentials in your request. So this is the JSON structure for uh, which can be passed 
in the request itself. <clears throat> it's much more cleaner, easier to read, um, versus key values in the request itself. So in this example, you're basically requesting for entities with targeted sentiments set to true, and one entity only in the response, and also same for keywords. Here's an example response from NLU. Um, you'll notice that usage information on the top has been added. It gives you a nice way to calculate costs and usage programmatically within your application. Um, you may want to put some monitoring over the number of calls every day or week and so on. So you can use the top uh, block, the text units and text characters and features that were processed by NLU. Um, and the response is pretty simple. We got keywords and entities that were requested. So continuing on the major changes in the API, um, text extraction is enabled for free. Um, in the in the request, you can turn it on by setting return analyze text as true. Um, you can also control the number of characters that an NLU will process by setting the parameter limit text characters to a number. This will allow you to really, if you have a URL, let's say a blog which has um, seventy five thousand characters. You can tell NLU that here's a URL, but I only need NLU to process, let's say, 10,000 characters. Um, it, it really gives you more control over controlling your costs per, per request. Another interesting feature that is available in NLU is um, you can request NLU to return the exact location in the sentences in the text where an entity was detected. So the response will return the exact offsets in the text where those entities were detected. There has been slight change on the maximum amount of text that is processed. Um, it has been changed from kilobytes to a more simple and easy, consistent way to understand character blocks. So any text beyond 50,000 characters is not processed, and this applies to custom models as well. So you can send in up to 50,000 characters for processing. Some other uh, important changes coming from Alchemy uh, microformats, knowledge graph, and JSONP are not supported. <clears throat> um, type relations is actually, actually maps to relations in NLU, and relations in Alchemy language maps to semantic roles in NLU. And finally, date extraction is not supported, um, but we do still support publication date in NLU. So here's a high level view of how did the different APIs in Alchemy map to NLU. <clears throat> Concepts, emotions, entities, and keywords pretty much map one-on-one -on -one to between NLU and Alchemy. As I mentioned earlier, relations, in Alchemy maps to semantic roles in NLU, and type relations in Alchemy maps to relations in NLU. Um, sentiment analysis has been reworded to sentiment in NLU, and taxonomy is categories in NLU. We've consolidated uh, a bunch of Alchemy endpoints 
to one single feature in the NLU called metadata. So authors, feed detection, title extraction, and publication date all map to metadata. Um, <clears throat> language detection, um, targeted emotions and sentiment uh, continue to be supported in NLU, and you still have the clean and raw text options in NLU with a slightly different wording. So entity type types have changed in NLU. We have reduced the number of type systems that were supported in Alchemy from 42 to 26 in NLU. And the subtypes have been also reduced from 976 to 433. And the reason for that was really, we looked at all the type systems that were supported in Alchemy. Um, a lot of them, um, we could, we, we've tried to find specific customer use cases for all of them, and a lot of them were falling under the bucket of not really useful from a customer point of view. We collected some data from customers, and some of these were really not being used. Uh, some of the type systems, types, um, entry types were also difficult to expand to other languages than English. And, um, and finally, the another reason was whether each type had a clear definition. Um, if there was scope for ambiguity, uh, or if our customers didn't really understand the difference between entity of type A versus type B, we made a call on merging them together. <clears throat> so you can find the full list of types, uh, entity types, uh, in the links that are on the slide. And uh, these slides will be sent out after this webinar. So here are some language improvements that have been made in NLU in year 2017. There have been not many updates to Alchemy this year. Um, so that's another good reason for Alchemy customers to switch to NLU for discovery. <clears throat> English in NLU has been improved specifically around sentiments, emotions, and entities. Uh, Korean, all features for Korean language are now supported in NLU. This is um, a completely new language support. Alchemy does not support Korean language. French um, concepts is a new feature that is supported, and entity sentiments and relations are improved. We also support customizing entities and relations in French, um, as well as Dutch, German, Italian, and Portuguese. So all these changes, whether it's improvements or new features, were implemented in NLU this year. So let's talk about discovery news, which is the equivalent of Alchemy Data News. Uh, simplified pricing. The discovery has simplified pricing where the price is based on per query. It's not really based on the amount of text that is returned in the response. Um, so it's really simple. Um, there is no limit on the number of fields you can request in the response. You can ask for all the fields in the response or as little as you want. And there is no additional cost around uh, the response itself. <clears throat> there is support for aggregation in queries, which is very powerful. Um, you can group the results based on the frequency, time slice, and several other options. So please um, do refer to discovery documentation for all the querying options and aggregations 
which are available. You also have deduplication option in Discovery News, which is a very convenient way to uh, eliminate duplicates in news, especially where a, a similar news article is, is published by several media outlets. So this is a very convenient way to get unique results. Um, another good feature applicable to Discovery News is anomaly detection, which, can, which you can use to monitor if there has been a spike or drop in mentions of a particular entity or a keyword in news. The query structure and the response is different from Alchemy Data News, and JSON is the only output that is supported. So the changes with respect to platform and deployment differences, both NLU and Discovery are available on IBM Cloud, uh, where you can develop and integrate with other Watson services or IBM Cloud services. So it's a single unified place where all your apps live, consistent billing, support, and everything else. There are premium plans available for both NLU and Discovery. Uh, premium plan guarantees compute level isolation, and it provides a much better uh, throughput, if that is of interest to you. So here's the high-level blueprint for how you can migrate. Um, the first thing you would want to obviously do is change your request submission and response processing code uh, as per the NLU and Discovery API. Uh, you will need to sign up for an IBM Cloud account if you don't already have one. You would then um, create the NLU or Discovery instances. Again, there's a lot of documentation on the IBM Cloud page itself to guide you through the process. Once you create the instances, you can get the authentication credentials and configure within your app. If you currently use Alchemy custom models for entities or relations, there is an additional step you can go to Watson Knowledge Studio and undeploy the Alchemy custom model and deploy the same model to NLU. This process should take no more than five to 10 minutes. You will get a new custom model ID, which you can again configure within your app. So once you have done all these changes, um, you can test the changes for free using the light plans. NLU and Discovery Light Plans. And once you are satisfied with your testing, you can upgrade your plan to standard and then also update the standard plan credentials in your app. So here are the major themes for, for both NLU and Discovery. Um, for, for year 2018. Uh, we are aggressively looking to support more languages um, and continuous improvements for existing languages, features, and models, and expanding the availability of these services in more data centers and regions. Some of the use cases we have noticed our customers um, using both NLU and Discovery for our um, customer care or voice of the customer. What are people saying about my brand? You can use NLU or Discovery to really dive into customer feedback and get some actionable outcomes or insights. Um, content recommendation is another uh, top use case We've, we have noticed. Find content which is similar to what your customers are reading or uh, consuming 
and recommend similar content. Um, advertising tech is also one of the top use cases where where you're watching sentiments for a particular keyword or entity before placing an ad on a, on a page. So there are several other use cases, but we just want to share some example real use cases that we are seeing being used by our customers using these two products. With that, I'm going to hand it over to Deepika so she can talk about other resources that are available to you. Thank you, Pavan. Okay, uh, let's run through some of these um, uh, pieces of collateral assets and resources that um, will help you during this migration. Uh, first of all, uh, we have a number of uh, formal announcements and uh, blog posts that you know talk to the, the dates and the benefits of uh, switching over. Um, and all of our uh, content is in that URL in the bottom of the slide um, on the Alchemy language migration. So you'll find uh, links to the announcement content. Um, this slide really speaks to the retirement announcement as well as the introduction of NLU and the introduction of the NLU light plan. Um, we also have multiple posts that talk through um, examples of um, migration, you know, what, why you should change, um, doing some pricing comparisons and so on. And also example queries using Discovery News um, you'll find those resources also linked to the same migration page I mentioned. Um, and then getting into more of the technical details, we have detailed migration guides for uh, moving from Alchemy language to NLU as well as some Alchemy data news to uh, Watson Discovery. And you'll find the, the guides at the short links that I mentioned at the bottom of the uh, slide. Um, and this uh, essentially summarizes the cheat sheet for um, all of the links that you will need. Uh, migration Central has all the resources you need, has specific links for individual migration guides for national language understanding and working discovery. Um, I've also included links to the news services, uh, what's in discovery, what's in discovery news, national language understanding, and what's in knowledge studio. And finally, um, the forums um, really sp uh, is where you can get all your questions answered. If you run into a trouble with a particular, say, uh, API call, or you have trouble uh, doing a type of query, there, uh, you know, just reach out to us and ask us um, on our forums. We have separate forums on developer work for NLU and discovery, so um, you could uh, uh, post there, and we'll we're here to answer. Um, questions that you have related to the migration as well. I think with that, we are at the end of the presentation. Lindsay, do you um, have any questions uh, you would like to? Do a Q and A. Yes. All right. Uh, first question we have is, how long does the migration take? So the, the, the time for migrating an application really depends on your use case, um, on the types of API calls you have. Um, we've had customers with very complex scenarios who've um, been able to migrate within four to six weeks. Um, uh, customers with very simple use cases being able to migrate within a day. Um, so it really depends on your use case and what service you'll be migrating to. We have customers also who've completely stopped, um, uh, who, who've done, who've re, who, who have redone their applications with uh, the new services uh, from scratch, um, and uh, they've been very successful in it. Pavan, do you have anything else to add to that? Yeah, that covers 
my response to Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, our next question is, can I use my existing WKS models in NLU? Yes. Uh, so you can absolutely reuse the models you have created in Watson Knowledge Studio. All you have to do is go into Watson Knowledge Studio, um, undeploy the Alchemy custom model, and deploy to NLU. You will get a new model ID, which you will have to configure within your existing app, and you should be all set to go from there. Great, thank you. Um, next question, will the Alchemy language pre-annotator in WKS be depreciated as well in March 2018? Yes, the, the pre-annotator for Alchemy language will be deprecated, but you will have the NLU pre-annotator available, which is available as of today. Okay, great. And our last question, um, with Discovery News, how many days of news content can I query? It's the same amount of uh, at the same time period that you had with Ask Me Data News, which is 60 days of uh, news, um, and it's constantly refreshed. It's uh, refreshed multiple times uh, every hour so that you have access to the latest news. Okay, great. That's the end of our questions. And that concludes our webinar. You'll be for all attendees, um, you'll be receiving a, an email with the on-demand recording, and then we will also have this available on YouTube. Thank you. Thank you.